Welcome everybody to a Game of Thrones. A bit of a weird series this time around. So a little bit of backstory is kind of needed for this one, especially for those of you who perhaps didn't see last series. So in last series, we built a new mod during the actual series based on suggestions and feedback, which is still being added to the mod now for those of you who, who did watch that one. Uh, still got new things going in every day. But what I've wanted to do was break away from base game CK2 and see how the Dungeon Master was in other mods. Now, I have a, a band of loyal and gullible monkeys working for me on Discord, testing it in uh, Elder Kings right now. So I thought I'd bring it over to Game of Thrones. A lot of people wanted to see it in Game of Thrones as well to kind of test the chaos going on here. So this series is going to be, again, experimental. It's also going to be a fairly short series, just seeing how the Game of Thrones world reacts to having this outside influence, seeing what events maybe work well, seeing what events maybe don't work so well in, in things outside of the base game. Now, I've spent a very, very long time today basically making sure that all the events and kind of polishing up certain events to make sure they are compatible with this, well, with anything outside of the base game. So, in theory, everything should, should kind of work, or at least work as the equivalent as you may have seen it in last series for those of you who watched that. Now, for those of you who didn't, a uh, little bit backstory then is that the, the, the Dungeon Master, which we've kind of created for any CK2 mod in theory. There's a couple of caveats to that, but I'll discuss that more at a later date, I guess. But uh, in, in theory, any CK2, total conversion, minor mod, big mod, base game, CK2, whatever is compatible with this mod. What it does is occasionally throw out weird and wacky events that have um, either a relatively small impact on the rulers of the world, a fairly large impact on the rulers of the world, add, adds a new challenge. Think of it as... Maybe something like Sunset Invasion, but instead of one big thing that takes a very long time to fire, you get a lot of little things that fire, um, and some occasional big things thrown in as well. What I'm saying is it might be better than Sunset Invasion. But the Dungeon Master, in terms of in terms of game lore, is kind of this benevolent, omniscient villain. Uh, if you want to look at him as a villain, most of the events are negative, I will admit, but you can blame the YouTube comment section from the last series. Basically, you've only got yourselves to blame for that one. Uh, but the Dungeon Master will have a, a variety of various different effects that go on, and they will influence how the world is shaped. And hopefully, that the whole point of it was to provide a, a new, interesting, kind of shattered world or random world style effect on a game without detracting from your games, that the goals that you might regularly have. So you might still want to form Rome, you might still want to, in, in Game of Thrones, take control of the Iron Throne, for example, Elder Kings, you might want to form the Empire, whatever that happens to be. You can still do that, but with a bit of chaos thrown in that should hopefully naturally kind of uh, create these interesting characters and strange little scenarios. Now, I'm going to do something we've never done before in, in a Game of Thrones, and to be honest, in very few series, we're going to start as a, a pre-existing character. I like the idea of potentially playing Robert Baratheon, but Robert Baratheon, if everything went right. Robert Baratheon as a good guy, who's a good king, but then we've got this corrupting influence of the Dungeon Master still kind of dragging him down, maybe driving the world a little bit crazy around him. I quite like the idea of doing something like that. We can maybe start as, uh, I would say Rob Stark, but I know everybody on YouTube has already done Rob Stark. But I think like redeeming Robert with the Dungeon Master, slowly chipping away at us and, and adjusting the shape of the round could be really interesting to see if we actually can truly redeem Robert Baratheon, or whether or not this kind of evil influence will eventually still ruin everything. I actually changed plan very slightly here. As I was customizing the rules, I thought that the Robert Baratheon start might be a little bit too easy, because all we've got to really do is win the war, which is supposed to happen anyway, historically, and then we're the King of the Iron Throne. I thought, who's a better underdog, who's also a historical character that has a lot of personality, has a lot going for him, but has a lot of difficulty, or necessarily more difficulty, Stannis Baratheon. Stannis the Manus himself, also one of the best characters. So I think this is, we could turn what is meant to be a very tragic story of this guy who was rightfully supposed to be king, you know, by, by laws of succession, but failed. And I'm going to see if we can actually do it this time. Can we now, with the Dungeon Master bearing down us, actually succeed as Stannis Baratheon? Greetings, players of the game. I am the Dungeon Master, gutter of destiny and occasional roller of dice. A contrarian not happy with the base game? Fine, I have adjusted the dice rolls and outcomes to fit your total conversion mod, or at least a map that's fairly close to that. Good luck. So, one of the systems I've actually added since yesterday's uh, video, for those of you who watched the end of the series there, uh, I have added the ability to the Dungeon Master to discern what you're actually playing, whether that is the base game or a total conversion mod, and that will adjust certain factors and outcomes depending on that. Now, this is a little bit of a cursed aside here, and I don't know exactly what causes it. For whatever reason, a first Dungeon Master spawns, 
and then is immediately replaced by a second weaker dungeon master. None of us can work out why that is caused. I've asked three different people, and three people looked at it, and some people have said there's no second dungeon master, and some people say there is a second dungeon master. We've got a second dungeon master this time around. For whatever reason, it's extremely cursed. The mod has taken his life of its own, and none of us can work out what's causing it. Anyway, let's... Let's get to it then. I mean, we, we know the Dungeon Master's there. We know everything's working as intended. What do we actually start with as Stannis? This is going to be quite an interesting experience for me because I don't think I've ever played as Stannis in the Game of Thrones mod. We've got the Baratheon Bloodline. Strong claim. Okay, so we get a traditional claim on the Kingdom of the Stormlands. That's obviously quite big for a start. And the, the very strong seed is fairly relevant. Not massive, but fairly relevant. Okay. Now, in the Game of Thrones mod, it's actually quite common that Stannis has a son with Celsi. We might want to get rid of her. She's R'hllor. We are actually still Faith of the Seven at this point. Okay. We actually might want to divorce her. And actually, we can divorce her because she's a faithful spouse. Hey? <laughs> what I was going to say is we can uh, divorce her because she worships the wrong god. Turns out High Septum doesn't care. Yeah, he's actually okay with flame gods now that he thinks about it. Okay, that's a bit strange. Um, I think we'll go seduction focus. We're chased. Okay. Oh, man, they've got limitations on it. I like that. Um, there's something similar I did in that mod I made a while ago that I never actually ended up releasing. Um, that, that added kind of restrictions on the web life and obviously restrictions on the childhood education. Some of you might have seen it in some previous series. I guess we'll go family focus then. Um, for kind of a similar effect. That's a shame. Wow. Um, we could go rulership. I like the idea of family focus. Let's try and get Stannis' son. Let's try and get him a good son as well. Uh, have a son. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. I'd like to get rid of you though. Base reluctance minus 50. She's a faithful spouse that puts her at another minus 50. She's a heathen. Is, a, is only a plus 25. That's mind-blowing. Okay. Um, can we maybe maybe line the Septon's pockets? Is that maybe enough, do you think, to get the divorce? Minus 35 now. Okay, fair enough. Um, we could try and just do her in. We could try and just get rid of her. I think that's probably not a terrible idea. Can we maybe imprison her because she's a... Uh, no. I was going to say maybe imprison her because she's a heathen, but apparently the game isn't quite that generous. That's a shame. Okay, Stannis the Manus, then. What do we want to do with you? Um, Awaken the Dungeon Master. That's an old thing that I actually need to remove. Uh, I just basically fires the first event here. I know a guy. A really good guy. A great friend of mine says he's a Dungeon Master, peering over his shoulder as if he's expecting someone. And I sort of owe him in exchange for not interrupting with my meddling. I promised I'd help him out with a few small things I've been bothering over a few years. A few popey problems. Uh... All religious heads. I don't know why it's showing that image. I think that's some strange Game of Thrones. But that's why we're testing this, right? Is to see um, <laughs> why it's gone wrong. All of the religious heads fall under a strange influence. So uh, all religious heads basically become... Or there's a chance of them becoming possessed, lunatic, impaler. This guy got like cruel hedonists uh, there. So all of them will have something weird happen to them. That actually does include the Dungeon Master himself, which we found out from playtesting the other night in multiplayer. Um, he does kind of curse himself a little bit there because he is the head of his own religion, which is Dungeon Mastery. Uh, so he is now a possessed, arbitrary lunatic, which, to be honest, is fairly on brand for the Dungeon Master from some of the things that we've seen this man do. All hail his grace, Robert Baratheon. I think Stannis was all right with Robert being king, wasn't he? Long live the king. I think that's okay. The gathering of the Lords of the Realm, Lord Edmund and his men of House Will got into an ugly confrontation where much Baratheon blood was spilt. Our houses are in a deadly blood feud. Edmund of Will, down in the... Is that part of the Stormlands? Or that's part of Dawn? Okay. Ours is the Fury, but I'm sure we'll, we'll get our back on him at some point. Oh, we've been fired from the council immediately. Thank you, Robert. Very cool. I'm interested to see what Robert would get up to, whether or not he will be kind of blessed by the Dungeon Master. I also don't know what's going on with the flags. I did actually reset the flags. Um, because I noticed they'd gone a little bit strange. Like, for example, this one, uh, Kingdom of the Westerlands is obviously the Baratheon Lannister sigil. Uh, like, the Reach is House Gardener. I did try and reset it, but it didn't seem to have done anything. Some of them are working fine. Like, it's obviously House Stark, but this one's a little bit cursed, isn't it? I suppose the big question for, for the redeeming of Stannis is, should we go for, should we go for a law? Should we go for the Red God this time? Um, uh, should we go for Melisandre as a wife? Can't marry her. That's a shame because she's a red priest. I guess, uh, I guess that's something we're not allowed to do. But if we go for a chase, we could so go down the seduction focus path instead, which also might work. I'm not sure if we want to go for a lore or not. Um, it's quite a hard choice, isn't it? Do we stick to, do we, do we play the character of Stannis who quite clearly became a and then try and guide his destiny instead? Or do we try and change the character of Stannis so that he ends up more successful? I like the idea of actually flipping over to Red God. We've done a Red God playthrough before, but that was over in Essos, where it's a much safer thing to do. Um, 
to the heroic lord Stannis. Peace be with you. We request your that you you honor your obligation. Answer this call to arms against blank. Well, that's worrying. Oh my god, it's against Robert Baratheon. What's he doing? <laughs> um, war against the tyranny of Robert of the Iron Throne. So the High Septum, uh, Robert of the Vale, Robert Aaron. Uh, we've got Lord Lucifer of the Whispers and Lord Stannis. No, no, no. I'm going to support the throne, if you don't mind. I'm going to I'm gonna swap sides. Oh, shit. Oh, there we are. No, 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 no. We're still part of this war. No, no, no. I don't want to be part of this. I've made a mistake. No, 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 no. I, I want to... No, no. I didn't know what I was getting into. I thought we were supporting the High Scepter, and I thought, okay, I'll be a good vassal of the faith, not realizing that actually it meant going against my good brother and friend, Robert Rathian himself. Shit. Um, start swaying him. It... High Septon lost. Oh, no. It would decide our fate. Oh, God. He's going to revoke my titles, isn't he? Because we're his brother. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, Veilman Independence. A damning judgment. He's going to imprison us. Or we declare war on him. Family first. We gain opinion of Robert Baratheon. <laughs> of course we do. Why wouldn't we? Um, Imprisoned by him. Maybe we could just ask him to let us make my request. There we are. Oh, he's going to release us from prison. He's shown mercy will release me in return from a favor. Right, okay. A bank error in your favor. Collect one favor. Okay, that's quite annoying. Let's go for have a son again. You never know. Celsi might give us a decent son. She's ugly, though, which is why I want to get rid of her. Um, it's not a good reason for getting a divorce, by the way. You kind of knew what you were getting into. Uh, but, 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 we need to get Stannis off to a really good start. And she is, she is not it. I really don't. Okay, you know what? That's fine. Yeah, Regency ended. That's all good. Might be necessary. Varys has found out about my plot. Typical Varys. Okay. Uh, might be necessary. Robert Baratheon is known as the evil. Wow. Because he's, he's a tyrant. Wow, he's already gone into... Within a few months in game, he's already at level 5 tyranny. Or level 1 tyranny, I should say. But obviously 5 points of that. Uh, dear brother, may you live in harmony and contentment. Thank you. I would like to offer you the seat of High Admiral. Done. Done and done. That way, hopefully, when Varys does... Uh, potentially uncover our evil plot to kill our terrible wife. <laughs> Maybe they won't mind so much. I'll send some gifts out here, see if we can get them on board. William Foxglove, you are a man of fine murdering. Uh, Master Harwood of Derlin, a man of fine murdering, through and through. Lord Lucifer of the Whispers accepted Robert's offer. I'm going to unmark him a special interest, otherwise he is never going to shut up. It just makes our spy master Melisandre, which might be a bad idea. Um, can we just convert to her... We convert. Convert to local um, religion, right? Law? One of these must be true. We have to be independent or our liege does not publicly follow the faith of the seven. Oh, we actually can't convert to law. Interesting. Can we not secretly convert to law or anything like that? Is our, maybe our temples a, it is a law holy site, but we actually can't do anything with that. That's a shame. Oh man, I was hoping we'd be able to flip over kind of secretly and maybe even... Maybe even do it publicly, but no. Um, unless we can get rid of Robert Baratheon at any point, we actually can't do that. So we could wait until a mega war kicks off and remain independent, remain neutral in the whole thing, then do it. That might work fine. Ah. Bar let everybody know about my plot to see her dead. Well, that's the end of that then, I guess. Um, you don't like me much now, huh? Minus 78. Scheming bastard, minus 40. Zealous, foreign religion, ruthless. Um, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna do that one again. I'm just going to completely restart that plot, if you don't mind. And Aegon Targaryen invades. Wow. Okay, that was early. King Aegon of Aegon Toast. I don't think I've ever seen him attack Robert Baratheon. Oh, and the Ironborn are going for independence too. Uh, and the Veilmen are going for independence as well. So he's really got a lot on his plate. Aegon might actually manage to pull something off here. Okay, long live the true king. By which we mean, obviously, Robert Baratheon. Or whoever wins the war. Uh, the inheritance of the Lordship of Giant Sons has been thrown into question of the untimely death of Lord Robert Arryn? Hanged on the orders of <laughs> the untimely death. Uh, it was me. I hanged him. Brilliant. Well done. Okay. That's that's really going to help your reputation as being a fucking tyrant, huh? I mean, seeing as Shireen is our current successor, I feel like we need to we need to take over her education. She's 11 years old and she has absolutely no stats, which is... Oh, to be fair, Mnemonic has, has done her in there a little bit, but she's still... God awful. Just really terrible. So we're going to try and take over and, and turn her into a half-decent character here. We haven't got much to work with, though. What's Stannis? He's a warrior, right? Skilled commander. Um, We could train her in martial. That'd be a weird one. I feel like diplomacy would be a better shout. Which is sp <laughs> shy, indolent, kind, and humble. Yeah, I feel like martial, for whatever reason, just doesn't suit her. 20 gold? Sure, why not? Please, just kill my wife. 158% plot power. Come on. 
Stannis needs the upgrade. He's gone. Bobby B is dead. What did he die of? Died of too much drinking? Well, 39. He made it two years. Brilliant. Well done, Bobby. Uh, Tom and Baratheon. Oh, Joffrey died of freaking Grayscale. Died of the Great Plague. That's obviously the, the much faster variant of Grayscale. Okay, I mean... Oh, and he had another son called Oliver. And now this kid's quite clearly a real Baratheon. The son of Cersei and Robert. That's, that's like actually Robert's son. Oh, that's actually quite impressive. Um, We could get rid of... Investigate legitimacy. Suspect that King Robert might not be Thomas' real father and intends to prove it. 42%. I would love to I would love to pursue that if we could. That would be a real change to history, wouldn't it? Oh. A new age of dragons begins. A dragon matures? Hey? A truly wondrous age. Yeah? The age of dragons. Oh, but Daenerys. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, hang on. Why is there a uh Carl Drogo? Carl, Carl Drogo rides Viserion into battle. That's a hell of a that's a hell of a mount there. So much that's a hell of an upgrade from a horse. Um, does the world have room for another dragon rider? Oh, does that mean both her and Drogo are dragon riders? That's frightening. That's really scary. Oh, Salsi Florence seeks to see Lord Stannis of the Stormlands dead. You have just signed yourself. Oh, don't auto stop plots. Shit. Um. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. I thought, we're turning on to stop plots because we made a lot of enemies already. And I don't really want to get in that much trouble. Uh, turns out I made her horrible. Let's just, let's just antagonize her. Can we request a divorce now that she, she's trying to freaking kill us, you weird man. What's his opinion of me? Seven. Send him a gift. Right, now let's try it. That'll, that'll probably be enough, genuinely. Nope. Minus 16, seriously? She tried to kill me. Well, she didn't try to kill, she was planning on trying to kill me. She's a faithful spouse. Is that really all that matters in your, in your bloody doctrine? You're a madman. Give him a boat. Give him a boat. Maybe that'll change his mind. You've been so desperate for divorce. You give the Pope a boat. Minus five. You are a disgusting man. Uh, just keep 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 trying to murder her then. 129%. Either we'll get her or she'll slip up and the Septum will allow us to to go our ways. Quite nice. That's pretty good. I'm the rightful ruler of Seven Kingdoms and King's Landing is an integral part of that title. It should be mine. Cool. Uh, Stannis Baratheon, I've decided to bestow upon you the title of one of these. Thank you, Tommen. Much appreciated. I forgot you could just send insults in Game of Thrones mod. You have the letter for Celsi composed and sign it. In short, I despise you. You're a prudish cow and your narrow-minded troll ways repulse me. That will teach that filthy occultist. Uh, brilliant. That's just about hopefully going to push her over the edge. Maybe she'll start another murder plot now. Can we request a divorce? She hates me. Minus five. I, I just can't believe it. I just can't believe that she worships a different religion. She's a mystic. She's zealous in her religion too. She started a plot against us and the Hive Septon's like, no, 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 it's it's perfectly acceptable. We could buy a favor from the Septon, right? To, to force it through. Uh, demand return of artifacts because I sent it in my boat and now I can demand that he returns it. That's quite funny. Thank you, Lord Durham. He's assembled a party of mercenaries who will ambush Lady Celsi disguised as shit. Disguised as shit. Uh, dishonor. Good. That's just what we wanted. A little bit of dishonor. Seem you're not a big fan of that one then, huh? Oh, the plot's still going. Melisandre has produced a... <laughs> She's our spy master, so I bloody hope so. Oh. We're actually free. We're actually free of her. 165%. My god, that was actually pretty good, huh? Oh, it deserves to be honored with the funeral. Uh, no, she didn't. Oh, why did I click that button? 20 gold, fine. Okay, that's... I mean, cancer's a feast, right? So we should probably do that anyway. Um, right. What other plots can we do now? Um, is there anything really worth trying to... I feel like it's, it would be a shame to not have a plot going now that I've bribed just about everybody on the bloody island. Um, I think I want to kill anybody. Let's see if we can find a better wife then. Let's do it. So let's go search all. Uh, let's go women. Let's go married, preferably not. Uh, let's go ruler, preferably also not. Let's go different absolutely. And then we'll... I mean, firstly, we'll see if any are actually willing to join our court. And we'll see if we can find any good ones via this method. Nope, absolutely not. Um, we got like lust or oh, lust for competence. It's all by age instead. That's probably a better shout. Um, Gremlins is quite nice. Chased is not because Stannis is already chased. Okay, uh, let's go for like um, let's go for like genius. What do you think? Go for a little, little genius. Um, obviously women too. Probably not terrible. I don't know why I reset all of that in hindsight. Uh, Diplo range absolutely. Married preferably not. Right. Okay. Um. Genius women that we could potentially get to our court. I mean, Rogi with a bit of bribing wouldn't be difficult. Same with Sylvia. She's also lustful. Actually, you are like prime candidate. Fight to court? No, but... 
Our base reluctance is actually quite close. And... I wonder if we could just arrange it. No, because... Uh, okay, infidel. But if we save up a little bit more dollary dues, which I'm not I'm not spending money on this woman's funeral after she tried to murder me. Spend a bit of money on the dollary dues and uh, buy a favor from her. We can just guarantee it. I forgive the fees. Um, lose 10 gold. The fees must be paid. I'm sorry. Sterling gets hit by a storm. Dragonstone gets high taxes. I'm sorry. I must do it. Uh, let's imprison this guy. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, we're in prison him, and then we can just... Oh, God. And then we could just ransom him out. Evidently, not quite not quite that smooth, huh? Right. On the plus side, though, now we can ransom him out, definitely, and maybe afford a better wife. Hang on, where'd she go? No, 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 no. Did I mark her special... Uh, I did. Okay, good, 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 good. It is done. Celsi Florent died in suspicious circumstances on the fifth moon, 8304, at the age of 37. She was a woman who didn't let anyone stand in her way, except for a poisonous snake, which very much stood in her way. Right, let's get on these ships. 2,431. I don't like how powerful this vassal is that we've decided to go to war with. That's not a good idea. Oh, we could actually land. I like it. Okay. We've got his capital, and he's going to siege down Sweetport Sound. I feel like that's a fair trade, isn't it? In fact, he's now stuck on that island. So if we take his capital, we can probably beat him to Stone Dance as well. Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm fine with stress. Private farms been built. I am trying to invest into the economy as well. This is only going to be a short series, like I said. But, boom, got him. Wow, that was easy. Uh, but we might as well try and make it as best as it possibly can be. You know, maybe focus on, on some things more than others. Well, I normally would, I should say. Definitely try and get the infrastructure done, things like that. Bear in mind, this time I'm not playing with any crazy building mods or anything like that. So we're just relying on kind of base... I wanted to see how it interacted with the base game, and obviously going a bit nuts on that wouldn't really help out too much. So, what are we looking at then? Um, dishonorable, but how is she... What's she thinking of us now? Still can't invite her. And what does she want for a favor? 50 gold. We're actually quite close then. And Shireen came out... Okay, this is why we need a new air, because Shireen is just terrible. Couldn't be worse. Buy favor. Boom. And then we can invite her, unless she's a counselor. Oh, I should have checked that first. No, she's fine. Uh, invite to court and welcome. That's a good wife. Lustful genius. That's what we like to see. And then you are Stannis' new wife. Look at that. I'm hoping that's really all we'll need to do. We can't pick, again, seduction because he's chased. But maybe that will uh, maybe that will disappear. And he's actually falling in love with her too, which is quite a nice sign. Sir Davos. Sir Davos the Onion Knight himself changing our dishonor. Hey, this is great. It might not seem like we've really achieved much. We got rid of an old wife that was... Very difficult to remove. She was an old stain on the island of Dragonstone, and now she's gone forever. We've swapped her out for a much better wife with the potential for a genius Baratheon son. That's what we like. Do we want to give a reward to Sir Davos Seaworth? Obviously, we want to give a... Oh, there we go. Wife is Perganant. Excellent news. Could this be the genius Baratheon son that we so needed? Uh, I can use... I don't want to blackmail Sir Davos. I think obligating him, I think he'd be up for that anyway. Decided to start swaying Melisandre, because she's an incredibly good spy master, but she also does not like us very much at all. So, um, I'll teach her how to deal with her enemies. Sure, why not? I think she's probably far more skilled. I don't know why we've lost... Oh, there we go. We gained a little bit back there. What the hell happened to Tommen? That is a... That is a train wreck. Are you alright? <laughs> you don't really look much like, uh, like the one from the show, huh? Lord Treasurer. Never mind, I'll take that back. I'm sorry, my king, for calling you a train wreck. A daughter. Lyria Baratheon. Uh, not fantastic, but that's okay. Better than Shireen, which is how we will... Okay, we need a naming scheme for a start. Uh, we got Stannis. What about Flannis? It, it, Stannis two ends. Well, Stannis is two What a stupid... We got Flannis. Flannis Baratheon. Funny enough, there's actually no societies at all we can join. <laughs> the societies in the Game of Thrones world have always been fairly restrictive, so right now we just got to kind of... Kind of sit around, mind our own business for a little while. We obviously can't take on the Iron Throne. That would be absolutely nuts. I'm genuinely quite surprised that we haven't seen any dungeon mastery. Uh, bearing in mind that it's been what now? How many years? Nine years and we haven't seen a single dungeon mastery. And he is set to every three years still. So this is uh, it's a bit weird. I know for a fact it works. It's just that we, we have genuinely gotten unlucky. Maybe we've actually just gotten lucky in this situation. Urgenant again. Stannis, my man, this was this was a great idea. D genuinely, going, going for the Lustful. I think any Lustful character was the right play, but the fact that we got Lustful Genius is just a perfect storm to cancel out that god-awful chase trait. Oh. <laughs> that was not really what I was expecting us to start. Dungeon Master. Um, so, the Dungeon Master appears, points at you and laughs like a madman. Suddenly a great flash of lightning strikes the sky, followed shortly by a deafening horn. Some of your soldiers drop to the floor. Oh, no. Some of the floor drop to... Some of your soldiers drop to the floor, screaming your diplomat as an instant heart attack and grandma's head explodes. Paint in the castle walls the color of bingo and sherry. Skolira is 
dead as dicks because she is grandma in this scenario. So Davos, so Davos is our diplomat. He's had a heart attack. Mortals are voice names from a great distance, or perhaps not if you're living in a realm where horses might appear suddenly. I am the horse horse lord, ender of this earth and scorcher of man, scourge of glue factories and cheap frozen lasagna. A great flash of light appears in the sky, this time taking the form of a horse horse lord, and great trepidation takes hold. High Chief Glitter Stomp. Wow. Look at this man. Genius, attractive, strong, brawny, and more importantly, nomadic. I sure do hope you enjoyed our frugal dinners. Meanwhile, we've got the apocalypse. So in base, in, in the base uh, Dungeon Master mod, how this is supposed to work is that the horse is, that the horse horse lord is supposed to spawn in a horse. Uh, in the Game of Thrones mod, I believe there is no horse culture because obviously that's something from the base game. It's only for kind of that Easter egg and shattered world. So in total conversions that don't have horses, it's just a, a random uh, a, a random culture and random religion assigned to it. In this case, he's Gogasossi and part of the Dungeon Master religious group, which I feel like is pretty on brand. He does gain event spawn troops, so he's got 20,000 event spawn troops, and he landed up here. He is supposed to spawn somewhere near horses, because um, that just makes sense kind of thematically. But I wasn't expecting Glitter Stomp to come out straight away. That's uh, that's an unusual one. Is he done? Is he immediately attacking? <laughs> He's immediately attacking young Kai. We're going to have to keep an eye on him. Incredible Glitter Stomp. Welcome to the world. The old Baratheon. My son. He's a fucking genius. We've done it. <laughs> nice. Okay, that's a pretty good turnaround, you got to admit. Second kid. That's not that's not bad at all. The old Baratheon. I'm going to call you uh, Danis. Danis or Dan for short. Uh, Dan Danielus? No, Danis is better. Nice, nice short to the point. Danis Baratheon. Again, Dan for short. Sounds like it. That genuinely sounds like some shit George R. R. Martin would write. You know how he likes to kind of do names that aren't really names? Like, Eddard. P prime example right there. Danis. That's good. Uh, Danis, I'm going to train you in... What was Stannis actually trained in? Marshall. Of course, Marshall. What was I thinking? He's a, he's a noble, he's a noble child. He's a noble child. I should have gone with that. Um... Change focus to faith. Why would I do that? Oh, for some reason then, for a second, I thought we were a different faith. Uh, we've, we've saved the bloodline of Stannis. It is strong. It is powerful. We have a mighty heir to take over. To the east. I'm really glad, actually, we kind of got the Horse Lord squared to start off with. Because I think he's a very much the epitome of the Dungeon Master. For those of you who didn't see last series, this is a good representation of the things that the Dungeon Master can introduce into the world. To, to kind of shake things up. And again, it was kind of intended, to be honest, for multiplayer. Um, and after playing some of it in multiplayer, it does work. Uh, especially in the base game, it works very well. But obviously, for total conversions, there are some weirdness. Like, for example, the Horse Horse Lord not actually being a horse. Um, but you, you can blame the Game of Thrones dev for that one. You can tell him I said that. <laughs> Don't, please, for the love of God, don't bother them about my shit. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, again, it's going to be a, a short series just to really see what weird things the Dungeon Master will introduce to the Game of Thrones world and to sort of see if we can do something that's a little bit strange as well. I'm, I'm happy with the with the progression of of the Baratheon line. Big thank you, as always, has to go out to our executive channel producers over at both Coffee and patreon coffee page is new shiny um i'm sure many people have heard me talk about it here but it's what we're using as our new crowdfunding platform it's a bit fairer on the people supporting the channel uh it's a bit more straightforward as well so a thank you goes out to chax justin rules here we go again 46 Siric 313 ushanka namo my little cthulhu fredama bob Nostrus, Captain Morangatang, Poop Feast 420 d money zulu the wizard gandhi <laughs> i don't know why that one gets me every time hoover loop anastara galaxy wolf and of course, everyone else for the executive producer tier support over on Coffee. And a big thank you to Scott, Zulu, Distorted Triangle, Caden Carter, Arctic, Pelvis Presley, Scorched, Kyle, Zazzy711, Bacon Kitten, Buen Gun, Tonister, Blue the Bard, James Shea, Gogolus, Tantan, and Amethyst Corona, along with everyone else, of course, at Patreon for their final month support over on that platform while we are still there. So big thank you to those guys for their executive producer tiers of support. Thank you as well goes out to Hoofenspiel, Marcus Absent, Extra Small, Shlomo, Blizzaro, Jesus, Rovery, But I'm Home. For Teven, Riley, Jumpin' Jack, Paracosm, Madster 2000, Saint Raccoon, Magister Militant, Noobmeister, Gordy number one, and everyone else over at Coffee for their support for the channel. And a thank you as well to Demon Boy, Fiddle, Roman, William H, Super9089, Cody Cope, Emerald Beam, Laku, Blood Riot, and Derek F for their support over on Patreon. 
thank you guys. Thank you for bearing with the uh, the long list again. This will be till the end of the month. Obviously, it's only fair to those who have supported on Patreon and to those who have supported on Coffee as well that everybody gets, I think, equal and fair recognition for keeping the channel going. It allows me to make silly mods like this and produce silly episodes like this. See you all tomorrow for some additional uh, silliness, I guess.